Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another episode of the B2B Rebellion. Uh, really happy to have on today uh, Jeff Risley. Um, I've been following Jeff for a little bit of time now on, on LinkedIn, and that's where we came across one another. Um, and I felt it really important at the moment to have Jeff on, just based on, on what he's focused on. So his core focus is mental health and sales. Um, and I, I think right now, just with the, with the current situation globally, I think a lot of people are under pressure, more so than ever. Families, you know, personal lives, um, as well as work. But generally in a sales capacity, I think from being in sales myself, you always want to put on a brave face. And you, you're always constantly under pressure chasing a number. And that number may be far, far away from where you're currently at. Um, and, you know, you're always then trying to pretend at least that, that you've got it under control, you know. Um, and the key to being sales is that you're a good salesperson. So you're able to sell it, that you actually are doing, a, that, you, that you're doing okay and uh, that you're doing a great job in order to get there. So, you know, it's, it's a role which people are afraid to feel vulnerable in, I would say, right? And uh, looking at Jeff, Jeff's experience, I've seen that he's worked in a numerous amount of sales roles. He's worked in the tech space as well. I know myself and come from the tech space. When I first joined it, my head spun. You know, like the anxiety that I first got when I joined the tech space was massive because first of all, I was new to the game. And second of all, the speed at which things move in the tech space is unbelievable, light speed, right? Um, and it's, uh, again, like looking back at Jeff's experience, he's done it himself. He's been in that sales role. He understands the position, understands the pain points, understands what it means to have those highs when you meet target and those lows when you're maybe a little bit behind target. But Jeff, I've, just intro you a little bit there, but you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, yeah. So, so my name is Jeff Risley, and I'm the, the founder of the Sales Health Alliance. And I created the company to help empower sales teams to reach peak levels of sales performance and well-being through, through better mental health. And yeah, it's this, this company and this idea has really been born out of my own experience while working in sales. Like I think I can relate to a lot of what you just said there, Andy. Um, like my first sales role was just over 10 years ago and I was very much a boiler room type of environment. I was being measured on whether or not I can make $200 a day, achieve two and a half hours of talk time. If you weren't hitting your metrics, you were let go pretty quickly. And I managed to thrive in this environment. Like I went on to be the top rep in the company, was doing really well. But in the background, I was struggling big time. Like that's when I was really first introduced to what mental health and sales was. I had really bad panic attacks, insomnia. Um, couldn't 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 really couldn't really just get out of bed in the morning at, on, on certain days. So I'd have this like fluctuating rise and fall of depression. So yeah, on the front, like you said, you put on a good face, you put on a mask, and you can perform. But behind, I was I was suffering, and it was after the third panic attack when I said, "Look, it's I, I need to do something about this." So I went to see my doctor. Going to therapy 10 years ago was still highly stigmatized. So he prescribed me some anxiety medication, which I tried for two to three months. And I really hated how it made me feel. It disconnected me from my intuition and my emotions that made me successful in sales. And that's when I started to make this my own passion project. I just felt like if I could learn everything that I possibly could about mental health, how the body responds to stress, anxiety, if I could learn ways to work with my anxiety rather than against it, it would ultimately lead to better performance on the sales floor. Um, and I just started doing it like year after year. That's just learning, getting better, learning, getting better, try using myself as a guinea pig. And I didn't fully realize how important this stuff was until July of 2018. I just launched my first sales consulting website before Sales Health Alliance. And out of nowhere, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer, which was a huge curveball. But it was kind of like an aha moment where I realized the same strategies that I was using to take care of my mental health and sales, I naturally started to execute on in this next stressful period in my life. And again, as an entrepreneur, and again, during this next period as, as we go through COVID-19, that's when I really realized that, wow, there's a lot that you can do here to protect your mental health, take care of yourself, to reach peak levels of sales performance. And that's how we got to, to where we are today, trying to spread the, spread the knowledge around, around this stuff. It's an amazing story, man. I mean, I think it will resonate with a lot of people. Um, certainly resonates with me. You know, um, I, I, I have a, a bit of a theory that a lot of people that are successful are driven by their anxiety, or at least they understand their anxiety and, and can make it work for them. And that's what helps them be so driven. I don't know if, you, if know. you've got a similar feeling there. Yeah, so, so 100%. Like a lot of people fear anxiety. And one of the 
biggest mindset shifts that I had to make was anxiety is is essentially your superpower. I always relate it to anxiety being like Spider-Man's spidey sense. So if you're when Spider-Man gets, you know, is in a dangerous situation, his spider sense starts to tingle so that he can jump away and it helps him avoid kind of painful events. And that's our anxiety that wants us to jump away from situations that it perceives as feared. But the one thing you have to realize is if Spider-Man's always jumping away from bombs, he'll never learn how to defuse them and grow from them. And that was a shift that I had to make personally when I started to realize like, wait a second, like my anxiety is actually a really good thing and learning to use it to identify really important, meaningful things that scare me. But if you sit with it and you work with your anxiety, you can actually start to learn and grow from these experiences. Like anxiety only really flares up, at least from my experience and what I've seen is, is when you're on the edge of your, your comfort zone and you're right on the edge and your anxiety flares up to say hey there's a lot of uncertainty we don't know what's out there so it starts injecting you with all sorts of self-doubt and fear to make you run back to your comfort zone and it's a really boring way to live because you get stuck doing the same thing stuck in the status quo and you really have to learn to work with it so you can push yourself outside your comfort zone to to reach greater growth levels achieve more meaningful experiences for in, in, in your life Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, uh, like what age were you when you had that third panic attack that you mentioned that spurred you then to go get, get yourself sorted and get, like do something about it? Uh, yeah. So it would have been, I guess, 22 probably ish. Okay. 22. Yeah. yeah. Cause I'm like 32 now. So it's about 10 years ago. So yeah, it would have been about 22, I think. Um, yeah, it was terrible, man. Like, it's just like, Panic attacks are the worst because you just, especially because I was getting them out in in the middle of the night, uh, getting them in the middle of the night. And I found that like within sales, you are hit with so many different like trigger events, whether it's someone hanging up on you, deals falling through, missing your target, but you don't really, there's so many distractions in sales at the same time, whether it's metrics, whether it's being like, you know, push to keep going, keep going, keep going, that all of these little things that are impacting your emotions, like making you feel, feel afraid, you know, embarrassment, getting angry, all these things get pushed away. And for me, they just pop up in the, like, in the middle of the night when I was by myself, trying to sleep in a quiet space, all of a sudden these, these emotions and these thoughts would come raging back. And it's for, for someone that doesn't really know what this is, it's, it's super overwhelming. Your body is just like freaks, <laughs> freaks out and it, and, it, and it really shuts down. Absolutely. I mean, so uh, like 22 is is quite uh, it's at 22 to make that decision to go try to get help and everything. That's like quite a mature decision to make at that age. And like a lot of SDRs, like we have a lot of a lot of our community that here that would be listening to this would be in an SDR role. And SDRs tend to be around, I don't know, between 20 to 25 years old or so before they make the step up to an AE position if they want to go that direction. And I, I can relate to that. So I personally, I was an SDR for a number of years. I, I live in Vienna, Austria, and I'm Irish, obviously. And in mm. Austria, they speak German. So I've been living here for 11 years. So 11 years ago, I moved here when I was 23 when I moved here. And I just did it on a whim. Like my wife, mm. my now wife is Austrian. She was living in Ireland, said, I, I don't like it in Ireland. Like, we need to, I need to change. So, uh, you know what, 2008, the recession was about to hit Ireland. So I said, look, let's, let's give Austria a whack. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I did a bit of German, learned a little bit of German. And my boss at the time was like, oh, you know what? You can work from home over there and you call into the German market. You know, you'll be a German SDR. And I said, oh, yeah, no problem. With my like <laughs> little bit of German that I had. Yeah. And that's when I had my first panic attack. About six months into living here, first panic attack, I thought I was going to die. Is the only way to describe how, how a panic attack yeah. feels. It's, but, um, it's It's brutal, man. And it's just, I think that's what a lot of sales organizations don't realize. And it's like, every, like, especially fresh grads, like I had no idea what mental health was. Like I was fortunate enough to, to have a fairly um, sheltered upbringing. Like I had came from a good family. I was like, you know, went to good schools. Like there wasn't a lot of kind of things that were, it wasn't by any means like an uncomfortable upbringing, which was, which was very fortunate. I'm grateful for that. But then you're thrown into sales. And like I said, you're de- you know, like every day you're dealing with these 
really powerful emotions like shame, embarrassment, anger, like fear that you've really never had to deal with at any other point in your life. And it's thrown at you all at once, multiple emotions at a a given day. And at the end of the day, you're just buzzing by the end. And you're just like, what the hell has just happened to me? And sales organizations do a really bad day of putting a bandaid or a really bad job of putting a bandaid on it by just saying, well, guess what? We have a really fun drinking culture or we go out to the bar and that's how we cope with these emotions. And it's this avoidance and this escape mechanism where you try to run away from these emotions and what you're actually feeling and bury them deep inside. But those emotions don't go anywhere unless you like really approach them and really sit with them and really explore like what, you know, what's actually happening. And that's for me, that's what was always happening. You, you know, you, you can escape them for a bit, but they'll come back at some point that'll just absolutely shut you down to say, Hey, listen to us. This is not good. You're, you're not, you're, I'm, I'm really scared here. Like help me. Yeah, and that the thing that you mentioned there around alcohol as well, that's one thing that a lot of salespeople would use, as you mentioned, you know, as a crutch to be like, okay, I'll take a breather now, I'll have a few drinks, you know, we'll have a couple of drinks with the team, if, regardless if it was good news or bad news, you know, we'll push it down with a couple of with a couple of beers or whatever. And then the next day or the next week or something like that, it comes back 10 times harder. That's the, yeah. you know, with alcohol, it's, it just accelerates it. Uh, it. Not immediately, but later on for sure. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But uh, let's get to like the Sales Health Alliance. Uh, tell me, how did you start and, and what led you to that specific moment where you said, okay, I'm going to do that. We've obviously spoke to somewhat of the lead up, but when, when did you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to start this thing? Yeah, like, like I said, it just came, like I think the, a lot of the, the, the experience with testicular cancer really solidified that the stuff that, you know, I'd learned was extremely helpful for myself personally in sales and in these next situations. Um, But then I had to acknowledge, right? Like I had to acknowledge acknowledge that, look, I'm not a trained therapist. I don't have like the degree or the academic background to support, you know, if this stuff is actually feasible. Like I've done all of the neuroscience, all of the kind of reading around the research on this stuff. Like I know that stuff, but you know, the degree isn't there. So then I just started, you know, writing about this stuff on LinkedIn, making blog articles, you know, sharing my thoughts openly. And the more I started to write, the more I started to kind of share my best practices, it really started to become clear that there's a huge gap within, within the market right now in the sense that you have two sides of, of what's happening in mental health. On this side, you have like salespeople and sales leaders that are starting to openly talk about mental health, which is amazing to see. And I'm so grateful that this is happening. And then on the other side, you have these academic professionals, like the therapists, the psychotherapists, the mindfulness experts. So you have them on the other side that are act- academically trained. But the problem is anyone that goes to therapy knows like one of the biggest challenges the therapist has is being able to build rapport with their with their with the person they're speaking with right out of the gate and the best way to do that is through shared experiences and that's where i'm finding that a lot of the mental health experts are having trouble relating to the salespeople and relating to those experiences in sales because they just haven't lived it so where i like to position my business is in the middle that says hey i get what you're going through as an sdr or as a sales leader or as an account executive i've lived it like i know what that feels like I've learned enough about this side to provide some really actionable things that you can do to start taking care of yourself, to reduce burnout, to make yourself more resilient. But when some of those bigger issues come up like buried trauma or like addiction start to arise, I want to make sure there's an alliance in place, an alliance of mental health experts and tech providers that I can refer some of these bigger, more problematic and deeper issues to the trained experts. So that's where I realized I like, guess there's a, there's a really nice spot in the middle to really move forward. So it's kind of like that social proof that I got from kind of sharing my best practices, not only on myself, but sharing them with others to see them get better that I thought, you know, okay, there's time to do something about this. And two weeks ago or last week, I just launched the first online course to really help improve sales performance, well-being, and sales performance, resilience, and well-being through better mental health. So I'm really excited to get that out there to the, to the sales community. I'm really like, I, I'm going to take a look at that online course for sure. And I want to get back to that a little bit later, but just a question before we move on to that. Were you in a job when you started posting about your experiences 
uh, talking about your mental health so openly and so on. Were were you like, or were you out of were you out of work at that point? What, what were you doing? So I, I was running that sales consulting company. So oh, yeah. I was yeah. essentially an independent consultant. So I was working primarily with high growth startups, helping them build out their sales process. Okay. So I was working, but I definitely had the the autonomy to start, you know, really pushing the envelope here without having feeling like my employer will mm. not mm. agree. So that was that was a, a fortunate situation I found myself in. Sure, you mentioned a couple of times about commu- like uh, companies you're starting to see are, are getting much more open to it. I I also see the same thing. I think it's in the past maybe eighteen months, to two years. I think it's. A lot of work has been done by local governments and different things as well to, to push mental health. And I think that's then breeding itself at least into the tech space. And the tech space might be actually pushing that forward a little bit as well. Um, what, do you, what else do you think that companies could be doing or they're, they're maybe ignoring right now? Is there anything that you see as an opening from, from the tech community? 100%. Like, sport, like sales has been and always be a performance-driven sport. And the salespeople are the corporate athletes of... of the sales of the sales world or of the business world. And I, I, I I take this piece of advice from Tom short. He just distilled it in such a perfect way that I could not sort of change. So he says, and he talks about, we, we had this conversation today, how every high performance team, whether it's in sports or whether it's in sales, there's three key pillars that you need to focus on. You have your craft, you have your mind and you have your body. And, the problem that sales teams have right now, and I see it all the time, is 95% of salespeople or sales leaders and sales organizations are inv- are investing 100% of their budget into improving the craft as the only way to boost sales performance. So they're focusing on objection handling, performance, or better asking better questions, or running better demos. Like that's all around improving the craft, and they're missing a. T- huge opportunity to start investing into things like EQ, resilience training, mindset training, mental health training, all of that is focused on the mind. And when you think about sales, sales is primarily a mental game. The majority of mistakes that get made are going to be mental mistakes. So organizations have that realize this need to start prioritizing some of their budget towards helping salespeople navigate some of these stressful situations in a mentally healthy way. And also, how do you take care of yourself? How do you build in those rest and recovery periods so that you can keep performing consistently day in and day out? And that's really what the Sales Health Alliance and what this online course that I built is really around, is really focused around, is like executing on those two things. Okay, that's, that's excellent. I mean, just for people on the ground and salespeople, what can they be doing to you know, improve their mental health, make sure that they're doing okay, like looking after themselves? Is there some tips that you can give? Yeah. So I, I, like there's, there's lots, there's, it's a, it's a huge question. Like there's a, yeah, of there's course, a course yeah, I could yeah. write, I could write a book <laughs> on that. I think, yeah. um, I think one of the, one of the biggest things is, is really, really becoming inwardly curious with some of the experiences that you're facing, some of the emotions that you're facing. Um, the way I like to describe emotions is emotions are just waves. Like you are not the emotion. You are simply experiencing the motion emotion at any given moment, you're experiencing anger, you're experiencing sadness, but you are not actually that sadness. It's when you feel like you're becoming the sadness where you feel swallowed up by the wave. So one of the best things to do is to remember that, let's take sadness, for example, if you're feeling sad and you can become inwardly curious and sort through all of the noise and buzzing that's going on in your head and say, sadness is at the root cause of this and label it, just sit with it, sit with it, acknowledge that you are not the sadness. It's a wave. You can really start to feel that emotion dissipate, let it pass through you and get back to that place of calm. And that's something that a lot of new salespeople really have a difficulty understanding is like really being able to label what are all these emotions that I'm facing and, and, and become overwhelmed, start those panic attacks or that anxiety. So that'd be one is just remembering that you are not the emotion. You're just simply experiencing it. So when you can label it and sit with it, you'll start to feel much better. And two, self-care is a huge part of how you take care of yourself in sales. A lot of people treat it like an aspirin where they take it when they're really stressed out, when they should be treating it like a, a daily multivitamin. That's how multivitamins work. You have to do it consistently to build resilience over time. 
So the best thing you can do is have a startup routine. So have one or two self-care activities that you do at the start of the day and one or two self-care activities that you do at the end of the day to help your body understand that it's getting ready for performance and they know it's time to recover after that's done. What do you do for your, if you don't mind sharing, you don't have to share, but is there, is there anything that you'd be happy to share? Yeah. Like, like morning for me, it's always um, a lot of like personal development is a big one for me in the morning. So reading like a personal development book, um, plus going for a walk as well as a cold shower. That's huge. Um, then at the end of the day, it's exercise. Sometimes I put exercise in the, at the beginning, depending on sort of how, how well I've slept. Um, but then there's exercise at the end, gratitude and a meditation usually. But there's other things that I built in. Like the thing you want to remember is like when that discomfort is, is up. Um, so let's say you start a new job, you're entering an uncomfortable situation. You want to realize that you're in, in, in an uncomfortable situation. So you also want to match that with higher self care. Mm -hmm. So when you're outside your comfort zone, you always want to be increasing your resilience medication, if you will, in the form of self care activities to take care of yourself. Sure. That makes sense. I mean, the exercise piece for me personally makes a big difference. The more I can exercise, the, the better I feel, obviously eat well, mm -hmm. uh, similar, actually similar to you in terms of my daily routines, I'd get up early. I like to get up a little mm -hmm. bit before everybody else. So I have the house to myself for a couple of minutes. You know, I've got a young family, so <laughs> a lot yeah. of running around, a lot of screaming first thing in the morning. Uh, yeah. Bring the dog out for a walk, you know, like clear the mind a little bit, listen to a podcast or listen to, or a podcast or, or books. I'm currently listening to um, the, uh, the Bob Iger, or book, the guy, the, the CEO of Disney. Super interesting business yeah. book as well. Yeah. So nice. similar, you know, and then in the evening, just try to wind down. Um, yeah. And yeah, no, it's, they're really good tips, man. And I, I much appreciate you coming on and, and sharing those with the audience here. Just in terms of um, the online course and, and, and that, where can people find it? Um, like, uh, do you want, can you give some more details on it? And uh, what does it cost, for example? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, you can find it at saleshealthalliance.com. Just click under the, the training section and you'll, you'll be directed towards the, the online course. Um, course is 199 per person uh ideally though um i've, I've positioned it as a, a no-brainer for organizations to to really implement as at, at a team level it's about three hours of video content plus an hour and a half of exercises and there's a whole new ebook in there which is which is which is awesome as well but i've built it with enough flexibility to be implemented from a remote standpoint as well like i think I think a lot of people are tired of like the webinar burnout and trying to sit down at a set time and say, you know, here's an hour webinar or workshop and let's learn everything we can. It just, it just doesn't work anymore. So the way I've been working with organizations to implement it is to treat it more like a book club where each week there's two sessions, there's like two sessions that you'd go through as, as you know, for the t essentially an hour and a half of coursework that the team would have to go through. And then every meet every week you meet for an hour, not to learn stuff, but just to discuss the learning and how it applies because then that builds in that consistency of having open conversations around mental health and getting a better understanding of what triggers are other people facing, how is mental health manifesting in them and having a more informed discussion rather than trying to learn everything at a set time when you're busy, worried about, your sales target or making your calls or hitting your metrics. So I'm more than happy to help people do that as well. So you can always just drop me an email at Jeff at saleshealthalliance.com. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going well so far. So I'm excited to, to see, cause I think this will really start moving the needle on this conversation around mental health and sales. It's great news. That's really good news. Um, I'm really happy for it. I'm definitely going to check it out myself. Um, but we've come to the end of our time now. So thank you so much, Jeff. It's been really, really interesting speaking with you. I actually feel a calmness all over me already. It's been a very nice, <laughs> calm and a nice conversation to have. And it's a really Thanks. important topic. And thank you for the work that you're doing there because it's a, it's really important that somebody stand out and doing something about it as well. So thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you having me on, Andy. And, and hopefully this helps some of the, the SDRs and, and salespeople that are listening right now because uh, I get it. It's, it's a tough, tough grind every day. For sure. Thanks, mate. Yeah, see ya.